Oh, he's so weird. Like, legitimately so disgusting. Look at him move. It's actually rank. Ugh. Is Funcraft still fun? The question we'll be answering in this video. The next episode of my series of series is still series series. Uh, so, you know, so far we've had things like One Life is still One Life-y, Trollcraft is still Trolly, uh, Crazycraft is still crazy, and today, Funcraft is still fun. So without further ado, let's make a new world. We have so many worlds on this save. Funcraft, Funcraft, One Life, Fun Life, Bonus, One Life, I mean, honestly, crazy, crazy amount of things. Funcraft is still fun. We're gonna put it on survival, but you know what? I'm gonna give myself the bonus chest and allow cheats, can I do what I want? Still no face cam today, as I am just finishing getting over this uh, little bit of illness that I had, so maybe it'll be back tomorrow, who knows. Let's see if I can be bothered to make myself look remotely acceptable in the morning. Not entirely sure yet. I'd love to know how many of you remember Funcraft. Now, Funcraft was the mod pack uh, compiled by our very own LD Shadow Lady, um, and some of the mods in Funcraft were even created and coded by her. Uh, Lizzie actually spent uh, so much I'm learning how to do this stuff. Also that she can make a really fun and unique mod pack for us because nobody else could have the mods because it was just ours. And it ended up being one of the most fun series I think we ever had. I think it's kind of a slept on series, honestly. I think if people were to rate my series, they might put it something like Crazy Craft, One Life and Troll Craft. Uh, but personally for me, I put Fun, li uh, fun Life? <laughs> I put Funcraft uh, probably above Trollcraft in uh, how much I enjoyed playing it. So yeah, it, it was really fun because it was kind of crazy, but not so crazy that it was unplayable. I think that was a big thing we always, always wanted was a difficult and challenging mod pack, but also one that we could enjoy still. Starting off with these huge YouTuber heads. Um, these were custom made by Lizzie, and uh, it was all the people on the server and each head would have like a different spawner in and it was usually like an odd spawner like one you wouldn't normally see uh, so i'm gonna check this chest grab some of this loot here um so you can see here uh that looks like a polar bear oh there it is it's a polar bear with a skeleton riding it yep th there was always some weird stipulation we also had custom items for each player on the server so as you can see we just actually found cpk's fox hat by complete chance um, which gives us plus two armor, which I believe is the same as iron. And the thing with these heads is that if you were to go in and get all the stuff, obviously you could do it the way I did it. You actually can't break the spawners. They had an invisible box around them. So you actually had to go underneath to break it. So I could go under uh, and then you could, you know, break the spawner, go in and take the stuff. But alongside all the crazy shenanigans that people would get up to with things like that, you know, finding custom items was always really, really fun. Uh, the reason that I left myself in creative is in case I were to show you anything that I couldn't get to naturally, which might be the case because some of the stuff is a little more difficult to get. Now, water. This mod pack scared me of water for my entire life. This water looks safe. Don't think there's anything here. And I'm not going to talk about what it is. I'm going to see if any of you guys know what I'm talking about, the thing that lives in the water. And we are going to find it later. Uh, we also had these cool like ender fragments. So not everything was coded and made by Lizzie, but I I'm not sure what was and what wasn't, honestly. Um, I kind of know which ones definitely were made by Lizzie. Included but not limited to the Disney Wish mod, uh, which I'll go into more detail for. Uh, but yeah, this is Joel's head. Uh, what did Joel's head have in? So you see Joel's has zombie horses. But again, I would guess there'd be something crazy on it as well, because that's how this mod pack worked. As you can see there, we got Joey's hat from this one too. Um, so the spawn rate of these heads wasn't uh, crazy. I know I've just found two really close together, but um, that's not how it always is. So let me jump back out of here. And let me introduce you to a, a friend of mine. He's called a Topilek from the Deadly Monsters uh, mod pack. Oh, he's so weird. Like legitimately so disgusting. Look at him move. It's actually rank. If I come too close to the edge of the water, there he is. So, as you can see, he's disgusting. And with his big old lips, he'd love to give you a kiss. And by give you a kiss, I mean strangle you and take you underwater. Now, there was a few problems with Topilex. One, 
incredibly difficult to kill because you can't get close enough without him hitting you and once he grabs you you are as good as dead um it's relatively impossible to to actually kill them um a few of us found ways to like sort of block him into areas so like while he was like this we'd kind of try and like build around him but it honestly half the time wouldn't even stop him he would just murder you for fun uh you know what? i wasn't going to give you an example but i will um so the problem is now that he, as you can see he's not really in very deep water so if i jump here he grabs me and he takes me to a, a, a well tries to take you to a bit of water where he can drown you now the problem is that right now he can't drown me but it also restricts my movement so this the, the problem that we all had would just get you stuck there and there's nothing you could do and i believe there was like a harpoon it even says great weapon against topi like um now i believe and i could be wrong that's one of the few ways to kill him and they're very very difficult to kill and if they caught hold of you, there's nothing you could do. If they got you in shallow water like that, you just had to wait to be rescued, basically. None of us had access to game mode. Um, you kind of just had to wait for someone else to come on and kill him for you. They were a bit of a nightmare, to be fair. But also made the whole game very interesting because you would be so scared to go in water in case one appeared. Really added a bit of spice to this series. There were also a multitude of different creepers. This one right here is a napalm creeper. Um, if you can't guess, it means when he blows up, much more intense and sets everything on fire um so you know that was always exciting there were various creepers this is a moth girl very weird very very weird um and then we just got a wrapped candy as well which was another i feel great thing this wrapper sparkles in the midnight sky and you would eat it chomp 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 and it would give you speed too for about five seconds and they were just relatively easy to grab luckily with this I i'm just getting set up all the cool stuff about the series is actually showing up in this world right here you see this giant chicken there were a number of giant chickens variously around the map as you can see this one has nether blocks uh so this is a nether chicken dungeon and i believe this one was made by lizzie i i could be wrong and these dungeons were very high risk very high reward um as you can see down there super dark so what i'm gonna do is just to show you around go into game mode and uh well, you can see right there the first issue we have that's a blaze so you would come down here and as you see these things were mental look at it the, there's four spawners and blazes would spawn down here and these are nether chickens so you can see their hp they're much more powerful than regular chickens um and then what you could do is run around and you could try and find various loot now the reason most people came down here was to get uh, the chicken feathers. There was also chicken hats available. This is an orange chicken hat. They had all the various colors. You see blue chicken hat, pink chicken hat. And these dungeons really went on for a long time. They really, really like went around multiple places. They had little things like this. Here's a gold block. Not any more valuable stuff inside, but still. Then there was even this one that took you up a ladder into a real small room. Um, and these things were lethal, like absolutely lethal. The chicken dungeons were an absolute nightmare. I don't think there's one person on the series who was not scared of chicken dungeons. But the reason that you would want to go to the chicken dungeons and try and actually defeat them and, and get the things that you need is because you wanted this absolute unit of a weapon. It is the chicken sword. It's made by using a diamond sword, diamonds, and then one robot chicken egg, a rainbow chicken egg, a demon chicken egg, and a nether chicken egg. Uh, and what that gave you was a powerful... 15 damage sword um the eggs you could randomly find in the chests that were inside of the dungeons and that's what made them so worthwhile going into because you could find crazy stuff and you see what i mean how there was constantly content with this series um and that's what i really loved about it there was always something to do in the very very early episodes there was actually these like crazy mechanical octopus that would just ruin the game because like a hundred would spawn um, so we actually had to take those out i think in the end but it was just non-stop fun non-stop action See all these hot air balloons around as well? They were uh, relatively easy ways to just gain some of the basics. Uh, so you could, you know, build up and find some, like, apples, iron. If you're really clever, you could take the blocks of iron from the hot air balloons. Um, and this beam of light here brings me to one of my favorite things. And these are from... I'm pretty sure they're from Evilcraft. Okay, honestly, the way that everything's actually spawning in this without me having to do anything is unreal. That's a very fun part too, which we'll go over in a moment. So yeah, these are environmental accumulators. Um, so usually these would have like a chest on them or a chest nearby them. And you can get some like cool stuff 
uh, from them, like uh, to do with evil craft and dark craft, I think they were called, which is the storyline I basically followed. I used the evil craft mod a lot because you could also make brooms, which was unreal. Uh, here we have a yammy head. So let's see what kind of stuff yammy has in her head. What does she have? That was like a cat. Some enchanted books, some steak, some pizza. It's a cat with a baby zombie on. Amazing. This is a gargoyle dungeon or a gargoyle tower. Now, they spawn kind of random. But you can see these things here are, they're gargoyles. And they say evil gargoyle and they don't move. And I'm assuming that's because I am in game mode. You know, now I'm looking at this, I think I did briefly come here. Uh, so I had vindicators, illusioners. And there was a bunch of stuff. You could get these little figure cases, which were great fun to collect. And you see we had some custom enchantments, roasting, breaking, uh, reading, bat's wings, all sorts of stuff. You know, so you get some really cool rewards from in there. But if you're not in game mode, these things are lethal. They are mental. If I give myself strong armor, bear with me one second. So honestly, this is a set of armor I straight up didn't even know existed. Um, it's called the Dragon Set. It gives a full set, gives you strength, absorption, fire resistance, and resistance. Oh, flights as well. Oh, yeah, I can fly. All right, sick. Um, so this is unbelievably strong armor. Uh, now, I have the chicken sword as well. As we get closer to this gargoyle area, um, they should start getting a little bit larry. Now, the issue is they have a lot of... H yeah, you can see that they're already they're out and about flying, and they're, they're pretty terrifying because they run as well. They run and they fly, which I don't think helps. Okay, so for now, for some reason, they're actually staying pretty inactive. So maybe it's because we're in a single-player world, not a server. Oh, no, they're up. And, uh, yeah, they, so you can see they would, like, pick you up, throw you about. Um, I mean, so they're not doing a great deal of damage to me, but you can see why without... This is an unbelievably OP armor set. And they swarm. Look at the amount of them. So thankfully, I have all the absorption and stuff, so I didn't know this armor set existed. Uh, it's clearly very, very powerful. So we ended up this far away. <laughs> As you can see on the top of the screen there, it does say Mechanical Octopus twice. Oh, three times. This is why we had to remove it from this multiplayer world. No matter how much we change the config, they would not stop spawning. It was wild. So he's a bit of a unit. He's got a lot of HP. You can see, I mean, obviously, again, the chicken sword is going to make light work of him. Uh, but if I were to go back into game mode zero... Okay, so as you can see, he fires smaller octopus at you. He fires little octopus. So, I'll see if I can go closer to get to do it again. Okay. So, if they hit you, they spawn, like, water all around you to slow down. I'm going to let it happen because I think I'm pretty safe in this armor. Um, so, he hit me. It splits up into, like, five different little ones. Uh, that one actually didn't surround me in water. They normally do, I'm pretty sure. Again, with this uh, sword, these seem very easy to dispatch of, but like, just imagine regular armor and regular weapons. It would take an absolute age to be able to do that. So just when you think you found the most powerful weapon in the chicken sword, uh, you find out, uh, this was me in particular, I found out very close toward the end of the series that there was actually some things that were even stronger. And those are the gargantuan weapons. Now these things are massive. Absolutely massive. Uh, this does 80 hearts of damage. However, to make it, you need to have big sticks and a gargantuan version of every basic sword. And to get the gargantuan version of these weapons, you can see it was no real easy feat. Uh, you needed, you know, seven blocks of diamonds, a, already a big diamond sword. This is a gargantuan one. So you had to get to a big diamond sword first, which is block of diamond, block of diamond, and big sticks. And then you had to use this to get to a gargantuan diamond sword. And then once you did that with everything, you could then get the Gargantuan Multi-Sword, um, which obviously is super OP. There was also a Gargantuan Multi-Pick as well. So they are unbelievably OP. Obviously, they do 80 hearts of damage, which is wild. And the last thing I think, the last two things I think I want to show you, uh, I'm hoping there's one here. The OG fans of Funcraft know exactly who I'm looking for. I'll leave it in the comments if you do know who I'm looking for. A certain gal who would live in some villages, and she would perhaps give you few tasks to do oh there she is in this house is my gal bailey where you could go to get bailey's dailies and you could come in here and you could get quests and you could then give her what you needed and you would get rewards for that 
Um, so like, you know, it says here, circuits, schmirkets, gather 64 redstone. So I could just, you know, give myself a stack of redstone because like I'm actually playing this right now. I'd go here, I'd give her 64 and she'd give me 30 bottles of enchanting. And I could be like, you know what? I'm going to get this, this quest now. So I just got uh, the stay lucky, get, gather one rabbit's foot. So now if I get one rabbit foot and I did this and give her this, I get seven emeralds. So there was lots of really cool, it was like constantly having things to do. If I didn't know what I wanted to do for my episode, I could go and just do Bailey's dailies for the day and it would provide some fun content, uh, which again is something I need when I'm making a series. I need guidance. Without guidance, I stray and my videos get very boring. Now, one thing I noticed we had here was a four leaf clover. These are one of my favorite things. You can find them pretty easily just by breaking grass and using it would give you a random item. As you can see, you get shulker boxes. That's diamond leggings there. Sandstone, poisonous potato, a piece of paper, a hoe, terracotta, a rail, a cake. As you can see, it really does give you just about anything. And the final thing that I would like to show you, it's the Disney wish blocks. So we're going to place some of these down and break them. So to get Disney wish blocks, you would need Disney wish ore. I can see here. So a Disney wish block, you would need some of the ore and you just can surround it with either iron, gold or emerald. It made no difference to what you got from it. So, you know, a lot of people just used iron because it's the easiest to get. And inside of these things would be various Disney related things. I can break this. And I got a new hat. And that is the hat of Bambi. So there's a Bambi hat. Uh, if I break the next one. So sometimes you'd get very lucky and you'd get a pet. Um, so that time I got the Goofy hat. Mini hat. What was this one? Is that Goofy again? It is Goofy again, sadly. This time I got Donald Duck. And Pluto. But one of the big things you could get that I think everyone was trying to get, I think was called, yes, it was Pua. Look at this little guy. And that Pua came directly from the Disney wish block. Um, and I think you could tame it. This mod pack also, I'm pretty sure, had Boo the Pomeranian in, uh, which I I'm pretty sure Boo has actually died since then. So rest in peace, Boo the Pomeranian. But yeah, you can also just find Boo the Pomeranian around. Uh, oh, and these Pegasus caused a huge problem because you would right click on them, they'd fly upwards and you get kicked from the server for flying before you were supposed to be able to. So honestly, now that I'm even talking about it, I'm getting so excited and we aren't even doing another season of it. There'd be no point because it's the exact same mods. But I think this is really, truly a slept on series. I really think it's one of the better ones we ever did. And obviously it was very unique because Lizzie made some of the mods herself. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of Funcraft is still fun. Let me know if you remember Funcraft and where you rate it versus some of my other series. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for the support. I appreciate you all. Get CPK to 600k by the 1st of May. We can do it. We're so close. 4,000 subs to go. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.